this week at Starbase. Test article B18.3 is cryo-tested at the Massey Outpost. A series of tests are performed on Pad 2's deluge system, and crews once again attempt a static fire on Ship 38. Following the issues that SpaceX had last week during testing, were they finally able to perform a successful full-duration static fire? Well, let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. Starting off this week on Saturday afternoon, a new multi-level work platform was taken into Mega Bay 2 as SpaceX continues to build out and fine-tune their production facilities. Also on Saturday, the Flight 11 hot stage ring adapter was moved to the Star Factory doorway. Later that afternoon, the article was rolled across the ring yard following the new work platform into Mega Bay 1. A few hours later, it was lifted for installation atop Booster 15 in preparation for the upcoming Final Block 2 launch. At the Gigabay site, work continues with multiple additional large concrete pours, as well as prefabricated elevator pits being lifted and lowered into position in the building's foundation. Down the road at the launch complex, several new cross-braced vaporizers were delivered this week as SpaceX continues to make progress on the expansion and fortification of the new tank farm. Moving on to this week's testing activity, on Monday morning, SpaceX got to work on their next attempt to static fire Ship 38, starting with the removal of the work platform from the underside of the launch mount at Pad 1. A little while later, the Flight 11 Starshift waved at us as it performed a flap actuation test. Next on the checklist, the launch and catch tower was transitioned into launch and testing configuration as the arms opened and climbed the tower and the ship quick disconnect arm rotated back in. The detonation suppression system was then tested, with water and gas being expelled from the bottom side of the launch mount. A little after noon, the launch mount vent was opened and SpaceX began cooling down stage zero. A short time later, the vent was closed and propellant began flowing into the Starship. During propellant loading, SpaceX performed additional flap actuation testing on the ship. Finally, a little before 1 that afternoon, Ship 38 breathed fire for the first time as the rocket performed a static fire. A post from SpaceX later confirmed that the vehicle successfully completed a full-duration test of its six Raptor engines, clearing one of the final hurdles ahead of Flight 11. Overnight, the ship transport stand was moved back to Pad 1 in preparation for the removal of Ship 38 from the launch mount. On Tuesday evening, the Flight 11 ship was lifted free of its static fire adapter and transferred to the waiting stand for its trip back to the build site. Once the vehicle was secured and released, it rolled to the pad entrance and at midnight it was brought out onto Highway 4 and taken back to the build site and into Mega Bay 2. The ship was then lifted back onto one of the work stands to receive final checkouts and preparations for its upcoming launch. On Thursday, some intermittent and at times heavy venting was spotted at the launch site as SpaceX performed some tank farm testing. With Ship 38 static fire campaign now in the rearview mirror, SpaceX's crawler crane at the launch site removed the ship adapter from the Pad 1 launch mount in the early hours of Friday morning. That afternoon, workers began reinstalling the booster hold-down clamps as they endeavored to return the launch mount to its standard super heavy setup. That evening, as the configuration continued, the ship quick disconnect adapter was lifted off the top of the booster quick disconnect and lowered to the ground. Throughout the week, several tests of the water deluge system was observed at Pad 2. After beginning tests of the system last week, SpaceX performed an additional five tests of the deluge system this week as they work to ensure that it's ready to withstand the fury of 33 Raptor 3 engines in the near future. On Thursday, SpaceX began testing on the new B18.3 test tank at the Massey Outpost. The Block 3 test article was loaded with cryogenics and then detanked as SpaceX looks to prove out the design of the latest iteration of Super Heavy. A second round of cryogenic testing followed the next evening, with the vehicle being loaded and then detanked over the next few hours. Near the end of the week, a booster transport stand was brought to the ring yard and eventually taken into Mega Bay 1. Booster 15, now with its hot stage ring installed, was then lifted onto the waiting stand. In the early hours of Friday morning, the flight-proven Super Heavy booster was brought out of Mega Bay 1 and taken to the Rocket Garden to wait for its upcoming trip down Highway 4 to Pad 1 ahead of Flight 11. With Booster 15 safe in the Rocket Garden now, an old booster transport stand was brought over to Mega Bay 1 and eventually brought inside the building. 
Later on Friday afternoon, the door to Mega Bay 1 opened and we saw that Booster 12 had been transferred to the waiting transport stand. Switching over to this week's Falcon 9 activity, early on Sunday morning, the Starlink Group 10-27 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying another 28 satellites to low Earth orbit. Following the successful launch, Booster 1085 and both varying halves were recovered and returned to Port Canaveral for processing. Early on Wednesday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1096 lifted off on just its second mission as it launched from Historic Launch Complex 39A. The mission deployed NASA's Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, NOAA's Space Weather Follow-On at LaGrange 1 Satellite, and NASA's Carruthers Geocorona Observatory, sending them on their way to the Sun-Earth LaGrange Point 1. The booster and fairing halves were all recovered and returned to port for refurbishment. And less than 24 hours after the IMAP launch, the Starlink Group 10-15 mission lifted off from Slick 40 for the 22nd launch of Booster 1080. On Friday night, Doug returned to port with the recovered fairing halves with a mesmerizing storm as a backdrop. In other space news, on Tuesday, United Launch Alliance rolled out their Atlas V rocket to the pad at Space Launch Complex 41 in preparation for the Kuiper 3 mission. On Thursday morning, the rocket blasted off into the Florida skies, successfully delivering another 27 satellites to orbit as Amazon works to build out its internet mega constellation. This week, Firefly Aerospace announced that they'd been awarded a $10 million contract addendum from their Blue Ghost Mission 1. This will give NASA access to additional data that the company collected during their historic first successful commercial landing on the moon. Blue Origin announced progress at their Lunar Plant 1 in Florida in the form of their first test article built in the new facility. The Lunar Transporter Sunshield is a 20-meter disk that will protect the transporter and crew lander from solar radiation while docked. Blue also gave a brief update on the next launch of their new Glenn rocket, saying that they plan to roll their first stage to the pad soon and perform a hot fire test around the middle of October. Their landing ship Jacqueline was spotted being towed back into port this week following some sea trials as the company prepares for potential booster landing on this next mission. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp also shared footage from a test fire of their BE-7 vacuum engine, saying that they are currently testing the engine five times a day. Once operational, the BE-7 engine will be used by both the Blue Moon Lander as well as the Cislunar Transporter being developed by Lockheed Martin. Stoke Space shared images from a recent static fire test of their Zenith engine from the test site at Moses Lake. The first stage of Stoke Space's Nova rocket, designed to be fully reusable, will use a complement of seven of these engines. Axiom Space posted that they've entered into a contract with Redwire Space for the rollout solar arrays for Axiom Space Station. Sierra Space and NASA both gave updates on the plans for Dream Chaser this week. Reaching a mutual agreement, they are now planning for a launch late next year, and the mission profile is a free flyer demonstration flight of the space plane. And there you have it, another jam-packed space update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.